Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today on Need for Knowledge we go behind the scenes to see how Pokemon gaming cards are made, as well as an insight into the modern technology used to manufacture this popular game. Japan is known for many amazing inventions that influence pop culture. These include anime, instant noodles, and emojis, and while the list goes on and on, another notable Japanese invention is the Pokemon franchise. This is one of the highest grossing franchises of all time, with over a thousand characters, which are represented across many different media platforms. Of all these, the Pokemon card game is the most popular, and if you've ever wondered how these cards are made, you're in the right place. By the late 1990s, the Pokemon franchise had gained a huge fan base within just a few years of its inception, and in 1999, the first Pokemon card game was created in North America. Like all other Pokemon branded things, the game was created as an extension of the Pokemon company in Japan. This card game tries to depict the video games as closely as possible, with each card representing a Pokemon character as well as their strengths and weaknesses. The game is played between two people who aim to defeat their opponent by knocking out their Pokemon cards. All over the world, over 43 billion Pokemon trading cards have been sold making it the highest selling trading card game of all time. However, the company's success is not based on just past glory. Decades after the game was introduced, it still resonates with members of the younger generation. Therefore, Pokemon game cards are still just as relevant as they used to be, if not more. When you purchase a pack of Pokemon cards, the first things you notice are the sleek packaging, the near printing of the characters on each card, and the overall quality of the package. All this results from a meticulous production process that begins with graphic designers. The card creation process begins with several designers and developers working behind a desktop computer, selecting and perfecting the designs that will eventually be printed on plain cards. First, the product development department receives a card list that involves different characters. These characters are then designed on these computers and arranged on a software that displays the template of a regular Pokemon card. After drawing the characters, the designers and developers have a meeting where the boss inspects and compares everyone's work. Those that are unsatisfactory are sent back, and the developer works on them again, while those that pass this screening process are approved for the next phase, which is scripting. These card templates are then passed on to the scripting department, where text is added to the e-cards which contain just drawings of a particular character. These texts include instructions for each card, the strength and weaknesses of each character, the numbers, and basically every word or number you see on a Pokemon card. Before these texts are applied, they are proofread and checked for spelling errors, ambiguity, and other mistakes. Next, the texts are applied to each e-card and sent to another department for editing. The editing process takes about three weeks for each language, and the most popular ones include English, French, Italian, German, Portuguese, and Spanish, among others. After editing, the demo cards are sent to a typesetter, which prepares the cards for the initial printing process. Only a few hundreds of Pokemon cards are printed at this stage. After printing, they are laminated for durability, packed, and sent to playtesters hired by the Pokemon company. And these people probably have the coolest job of all. The playtesters are a group of smart people who are professional game players and while their job seems enviable, it is an extremely important one. Before the cards are released to the public, they are first given to playtesters. These people are provided with both the new cards still in production and older cards. Therefore, the playtesters office is filled with all the existing Pokemon cards. Their office has a long table which can sit about 20 people, 10 on each side. Let's duel! The job of the playtesters is to play the Pokemon game, build new decks, judge the game's playability, the compatibility of the cards, balancing of the cards' strengths and weaknesses, the game logic, test the moves of the characters, etc. And give a full report to the game logic design team. They mostly work full time, playing the Pokemon game for 7 hours daily, 5 days a week. All the 20 playtesters are expected to drop reports stating their personal opinions and the game logic design team will work based on their report. For example, if the playtesters think a particular character is overpowered, 
the game logic designers will reduce its hit points by 10, and vice versa. Fun fact, the playtesters aren't all professional Pokemon players. The office is occupied by a range of players, from experienced to inexperienced. In this way, the game is relatable to even 5-year-olds. Playtesting takes several weeks, and technically, the process happens simultaneously with the creation of the Pokemon card art. While the playtesters and game logic designers make changes to the cards, the artists draw and paint these changes. For each change made, it takes the artist 5 to 7 weeks to draw, because they have to do their own research from Pokemon games and past Pokemon animations. At the end of the playtesting and the art creation, the cards would then be graded into common, uncommon, and rare. This grading is indicated on each card by shapes inscribed on each. For example, a circle means the card is common, a diamond means it is uncommon, and a star is usually seen on rare cards. Once the designing is complete, the logic designers arrange the cards into theme decks, typically containing 60 cards each. Each theme deck contains character cards, energy cards, and trainer cards. Next, each deck is sent to the printing stations where actual Pokemon game cards are printed on a large scale. High quality paper is used to ensure durability, and each theme deck is printed using a specific printing machine to avoid mix-up of the cards. After printing, the cards move on to the packaging area, where they are sealed in paper boxes or metal tins. Finally, the packaged cards are shipped to Pokemon stores worldwide, from where they are made available to eager customers around the world. From start to finish, making a pack of Pokemon cards takes at least a year. Just like we've seen, it goes beyond just printing the cards, and it involves creating a synergy between all the available Pokemon media. In other words, before a card is produced, teams of designers, illustrators, and playtesters do their research to ensure that the characters depicted in the game match those displayed in Pokemon video games, animations, manga, etc. To keep up with the ever-growing Pokemon universe, the card game is also upgraded from time to time. When a new generation or series of Pokemon is released, new sets of cards are also created, which typically involve between 100 and 200 new cards. During these times, fans of the Pokemon card game would rush to buy these expansion sets. However, there is no way of purchasing all 200 new cards at once. Instead, they are purchased in booster packs. The booster packs contain 10 new cards, all of which are within the same expansion set. The 9th generation video games Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet were released in November 2022, making them the most recent expansion in the Pokemon franchise. While accompanying expansion packs have yet to be released, many people are still after expansion sets from previous generations. What's your favorite Pokemon video game generation? I'll take the original red, blue, and yellow. Do you have the corresponding cards? Leave your answer in the comments section below. Thank you for watching this episode of Need for Knowledge, and we will see you in the next one. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for new videos.